Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12. This is my test world and we're going to be having another look at some traps. We've segued recently quite a lot into the automation stuff, which is brilliant and we're loving that. Um, but yeah, let's keep it varied a bit and keep something else going as well. And of course, part of automation might be automating some traps. So that's what we're doing. Tenuous link there. Uh, now, if you have been with the channel for a while or you've delved back into some of the past ones, we did look at traps previously in version 11 and how they worked. Uh, and this is not dissimilar at all. So even though we've changed to version 12, we're still relying heavily on Monk's active tile triggers for this. And it's working pretty much the same. So if you're familiar with that video and you've been building uh, pressure plate traps, you might realize that there's not an awful lot in this video for you. But I'm also aware that we've got literally hundreds and hundreds of new subscribers to this channel and new people watching who may not have encountered it. So I want to go over that. Now in this video, we are going to be looking at probably the simplest of these traps to get us started, which is the pit trap. Now I have extended this and made this slightly more uh, slightly more complex than the previous one because when you think about a pit trap you've got two different scenarios. Uh, a character first walks over it not knowing it's there um, and they're probably going to have to make a dexterity based roll of some description to avoid falling in the pit when the floor gives way, the trap door drops, whatever that particular trap is. And then they are left with a pit trap in the middle of the corridor, the room, whatever it may be. So it remains an obstacle that when they return and try to come back down that corridor, they may need to jump over it. So probably an athletics check. So you might have two different types of roles there. Um, the initial setting off of the trap and then what they do. Now, of course, they are going to know that the pit trap is there when they're walking back again. Uh, and you might just ask them to do a standard roll. You know, just, just give me an athletics roll, uh, DC 10, to just hop over it. Now you know it's there. It's not that difficult. Of course you can do that. But we can also do a little bit of automation on that. So I've got Haley here, who's in a what is obviously a very dodgy inn, because it's got a pit trap in the middle of the floor. <laughs> it's just an extra hazard. Um, and I have my normal pit trap icon here that if I walk over it, nothing happens. But next to it, I've got my trigger for the trap. And I've got these two separated at the moment for a reason. So with this, this is the, this one here, this T, this is the trigger tile that initially it's hidden. Haley's player cannot see that. But when I walk on that, two different things happen. First of all, it is going to reveal this pit trap. So we can now see that there is a pit there. We couldn't see it before. Uh, and it has, weirdly enough, done it twice. Why did it do that twice? It didn't do it twice a few minutes ago. Um, but it's now calling for a acrobatics check with a DC of 18, which is ridiculously high because I want Haley to fail it, um, to see if we fall into the pit trap so it's calling for that the player can roll uh, and yep she failed that so she's taken damage I set the damage as 1d6 for that falling damage and you may have seen there was a little pop-up so I'm going to reset this tile back to what it was so reactivate it also just check see if there's a bizarre reason why it did the double nope no idea why it did a double thing uh, and I need to rehide this one as well. Okay, so let's try that again. Let's clear that chat. Bit weird that it asked for it twice. It's not done it in all of my testing. There we go. It's only asked for it once. Um, Haley, can you please make your roll? There's your roll. You failed it again. And we got that little speech bubble come up. You don't need that at all. I just add it on there for a bit of fun. Uh, and it's revealed this actual trap. Now with this trap, now it's been revealed, if Haley wants to cross this tile, it's now asking her for an athletics check DC 10. So initially, it's a acrobatics DC 18 to not fall in at the first time, but once you know it's there, it's much easier 
um, and it's now a DC 10 in athletics, but again, it's calling for that role. So why have I done it like this? Well, the reason I've done it like this is because I can, and you, yep, not surprising, Haley made that one. What we can do is we can actually overlay stuff. So I can take this tile and overlay it on the top of this tile. So now they're both in the same place. So the first time Haley tries to cross this, it's going to get her to do that acrobatics check to see if she falls in. And then it's going to show the pit trap on the square that she was, whether she fell in it, in it or not. Um, and next time she comes back, she's just going to have to do that athletics check to try and cross over it again. And that will do it every single time she tries to cross. Yep, good. She made that one as well. No problem. So let's heal poor Haley up. And then we can have a look at what each of these tiles is actually doing for us. So first of all, the trigger tile. It This is set to, so on the setup, this is set to active initially. Okay, because we want it the first time, we want it to trigger as a the uh, acrobatics check. Okay, so we're going to have it active but invisible. And under the actions, I'm telling it to do several things. I'm telling it to activate the second tile, which is the uh, the one with the, uh, the the actual jumping over mechanics on it, and to, to show that tile so we can see the spike pit. It's then asking us for an acrobatics check. Let's have a look at that. So in our actions here, under our trigger actions, there's lots of different things we can do. If we have Monk's token bar installed, this is where we can get it to request a particular role. So we need Monk's active tile triggers for doing all the triggering and everything else. But if you want it to do a role, you're going to need something that integrates with Monk's active tile triggers. And Monk's token bar is particularly useful for that because they're both made by Monk, they integrate beautifully, and it just works. And also, uh, lots of the other features of Monk's token bar, if you don't want to use them, you can turn them off. So you're not cluttering up with a large module that you're only using a tiny bit of. So we've got request role for that triggering token. We, because we've got, um, we've got request role on, we can pick, so we can choose a specific skill. We can make a dexterity saving throw if that's your preference. Um, or we can do a straight ability check. I've just got mine on acrobatics. We can set that DC. We can put a little bit of flavor text in. So this is the bit that comes up at the top here. A pit opens beneath your feet, right there. Public role, got it to bypass the dialogue. I don't need it to bring up the, um, the, the box where I get to select what role I want because I'm already telling it. And then I'm saying for any tokens that fail, it needs to do the next action. So that next action here is just a hurt heal for that triggering token. And we've got minus 1d6 plus 1. Now we have to have minus because we want it to minus the hit points. We want it to hurt. <laughs> if you don't put the minus in, you will heal. And again, there might be reasons you want to do that. Um, I can't think of any way you would have a trap that heals you. Because uh, it's not really a trap, is it? <laughs> it's a surprise. It's like getting a cupcake when you weren't expecting it. <laughs> um, and I've got add a little thing add to the chat message that this has happened and it's going to be a public role and show dice. The next thing I've got is just a silly little bit of flavour. I've got a chat message the text says wah and I've got it just coming up as a token bubble on that triggering token. So when Haley sets it off she gets a little speech bubble just top right of her token that just says wah. Then I'm deactivating this initial trigger tile because once the pit's revealed, we don't need that action anymore. So that's what I'm doing for that one. And of course, you can add sound effects to it or anything else that you want to. Um, for this tile, that will start hidden and deactivated. Okay, because it's going to get activated by the triggering tile and revealed by the triggering tile. So this is not activated. And on its actions, very similar, we're using Monk's token bar to request a roll, but this time athletics for the triggering token. A DC 10, and again, flavor text, you would jump, attempt to jump over the pit. 
public role and again if we fail we're going to put up a chat chat message just this little thing that says oh she as the as she falls back into the pit you, again you don't need that and then i've got another um hurt that character so that's the two things working together and as i said we can just layer those over each other and we get a nice again the player can't see this the first time Haley attempts to go over it regardless of whether she makes the roll which of course she didn't there we go take a little bit of damage we've now got a pit trap that next time we have to try and jump over it there we go and you got that little text come up so a couple of things one that blinky blink noise every time it requests a roll if that is annoying you and you don't want that it's just an alert sound uh, to basically to tell the player they need to make a roll you can do something about that if we go to our configure settings and we go to monk's token bar one of the options towards the bottom uh do, 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 when i can find it request roll settings there's this request roll sound you can change it or I should just be able to remove it completely, in fact. So uh, next time Haley tries to walk across it, I get the trigger, but I don't get that silly sound. But you can change it to any sound that you want to if you prefer, rather than having that default one, because that's you know not necessarily thematically um, particularly useful for you. Okay, so that's all good. Now, the other problem that we had when we looked at this originally, which at this moment still stands for us, is the active tile damage that hurt heal option is only applying direct hit point effect so it's either adding or taking away directly from the hit points which means there's no accountability for damage reduction or anything like that so depending on the way that you particularly run it if you've got a barbarian who's ranging who's raging and falls into a spike pit you might say it's a spike pit he's raging he's got resistance to bludgeoning and piercing damage so he should be taking half damage from that fall yeah this won't do it this will not take into account damage reduction the shield spell it will take into account um temporary hit points but it won't take into account any other factors like that. So if you really want that to do, wait for the next video when we look at how we can do that instead. So this Hurt Heal will not take into account anything like that. And it doesn't provide a damage type. So if you were using it and saying, oh, it's a pit of lava, you take fire damage. Actually, it's just applying hit point damage. It's not applying fire damage. So again, any immunities or resistances to fire will be irrelevant and you might find yourself having to finagle and go back in and go oh yeah you should have taken half health there hang on let me fix that for you okay um, you absolutely might argue that falling into a spike pit trap regardless of whether you're raging and stuff like that that's not the same as resisting a you know resisting combat attack with a club or something you you might argue that but that's up to you so we've got this working, which is lovely. Now the problem is I've got to set this up every time. So what we really want to do is create this as a prefabricated so we can just have this stored somewhere and drag out every time we want to use it. So let's wander over here and take a look at what we've got going on. So I'm going to, so this, this tile here, this one with a T is exactly the same as that one. I replicated it exactly. Uh, and this one here, again, I replicated that one over there exactly. And I just need to double check to make sure that this tile, where it's activating it, is actually referencing the correct tile there. Yes, it is. Good. That's all the same. Now, what would be really sensible here is to use tagger to tag each of these tiles to make sure that when we use this as a prefab if we move it to a different game world or something through a compendium they still can relate to each other because if we move <laughs> yeah i know if we move a tile to a different game world or something like that it completely resets or a different scene even it completely resets this label it uses for that so tagger enables us to say no this is called trap tile one it's not called a a x g r i c <laughs> yeah, exactly 
<laughs> yeah, so we can set a proper title for that. Now, if you're not sure how to do that, of course, let me uh, quickly show you. I believe I've got Tagger on. Yeah, there's a box at the bottom here where we can use that. I'm not going to go into that for this video. Um, we've got a video on Tagger if you're not too sure what I'm talking about, but it's quite simple to do. So if I want to bring all these together, we're going to need to use the add-on token attacher. And again, there is a video in the add-on playlist on token attacher where we used it for making a campfire scene and things like that. So that's what we're essentially we're going to do. Now I'm going to create I've created a actor called Pit Trap, which is what you which is this actor up here. Hello, I'm a pit trap. Um, and we're going to attach these tokens, these tiles, to this uh, to this uh, actor here, because we're going to token attach, which means we need a token, this one, and we're going to attach those two tiles. Now, the, we can absolutely, I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, so first of all, with my actor selected, I've got an option with token attacher to go open my attaching user interface and this is going to allow me to attach different things to this pit trap so I can then that stays open I can then select this tile and click that link attach that to it it confirms selected object now if I move the actor the tile comes with me the other one doesn't I haven't attached it so I can do it like that. So if I go back to this tile, let's drag it over that tile. Okay, make sure I've got that and I can make sure that's attached as well. Now because they're on they're on the same square, it hasn't attached it because it had tried to attach the same one twice. Um, so you need to watch out for that. But what I can do is use this select tool and say actually everything in that square there, attach those. And then hopefully it has picked up both of them. There we go. So they're now both attached to that. I can simply hide this actor and stick it anywhere I like. And that trap will be there. Now what's a slightly neater, prettier way to do it possibly is if I unattach everything. If, hang on, let me select those bits. Let me select those bits <laughs> and detach them. I should be able to, yeah, I can move my actor without it. Sorry, a little bit confusing. What I can do is actually put my actor, I'm oh, sorry, I want to keep it hidden. Keep Put my actor over these as well. Then I can select and go, right, all of these things attach. Now it will complain a bit about the fact that uh, I'm trying to attach the actual token itself but now when I move it and you can just see those tiles coming with it. So now they're all on the same square and I can keep that hidden if I want to for my actual actor itself. So now they're all on the same square together uh, I can close my token attacher and then I can bring Haley over who walks over this one square and there's the acrobatic check required, which she failed. Wah! Take some damage. And there's the pit trap that now she needs to uh, jump over. Um, I didn't have the deactivate for the acrobatic, so apologies. It, it just popped that up again. Um, that's just the fact I cloned this one over and then didn't update it. So now that is staying there as it should be. Okay, so you do want to, of course, is just check that you've not messed up like I did with uh, one of your actions. Um, check message, yeah, that's that one there. So I would need to split those out again and just check those tiles are working correctly separately before I group them. I'm not going to go back and do that. As, um, you see me do it over there. That's what you need to do. Just check they work before you stack them up. So what if I want to now copy this? Because this is just the actor token that stuff is attached to here. This pit trap token has it, not my pit trap icon over here. Okay, this pit trap icon, if I drag out another copy of this, this is not a pit trap. It's just an actor token of a pit trap. If Haley tries to walk over this, clear that chat nothing happens it's just a token 
okay so I need to make sure that this becomes the prototype token for the actor so opening the character sheet for my pit trap actor I can go to the um, there it is I've got too many things on there click on the prototype actor which is this is what the token will be whenever I drag this actor out but with this pit trap which is the one I want I can now click assign token so uh, this token becomes the default token for the actor I hope that made sense now if I drag out a pit trap and I drag out a pit trap and I drag out a pit trap any of these when Haley tries to walk over them will set it off and again I've inadvertently forgot to disable the original triggering one which is why I've got the acrobatics as well but it is giving me the athletics that I want so there we go Haley can jump over that and this one she can jump over as well I've done the acrobatics roll instead by accident so I hope that kind of gives you an idea of how you can do that now because this is just an actor on here now I can create a folder if I wanted to and call it prefab traps or something and I can shove that into that folder so then I've got this folder that's going to have all of my prefabricated traps in it and you might have them as a range of different damages different images um, and things like that, different types of pit traps, ones with spikes in, ones with not, whatever's going to fit the theme of your particular adventure campaign, because they're not all going to look like this, of course. You know, ones in the wilderness are not necessarily going to be looking like they're made of stone and everything else. So, um, you know, pick, pick your theme and you might have a range of them. We're going to look at other types of traps as well, um, but I just wanted to touch on this one. Now, again, because this is in there, if you have your own compendium, uh, have I got one on this particular game world? I haven't. If I create my own compendium, let's just call it traps. I need it to be actors because I'm using an actor for this. I can stick it in my own compendium. And therefore, rather than having all my actors in a folder there, I could just have it in a compendium. And whenever I need it, I can just drag it straight from my traps compendium. And if you want to take that another step forward, if you create your compendium as a module so that you can save it externally and share it between worlds, you can create your traps in one world and by using your own compendium, take your traps to any of your game worlds that you want so make the trap once make sure it works and then use it in any of your game worlds as long as they've got token attacher in they've got monks active tile triggers in and you're using tagger if you're moving between worlds and things you will need to use tagger or it won't activate the tiles correctly so I hope that's been useful and interesting and possibly inspired you to go and play with traps a bit. Um, I like the idea that this can automatically, you know, they're wandering down a corridor and then the game tells them something's gone hideously wrong rather than me kind of going, oh, hang on, stop moving your token or whacking the pause on it and then describing it. Bam, that can happen. Then I can describe it while they're making their roll. So I hope that's been good. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Leave a like, leave a, co leave a comment. Don't leave a comment. Leave a comment. And I will catch you in the next one.